did you guys catch the game yesterday? That second period was fucked. Oh, dude. Like, it was like every time we looked at the TV, there was a different score. I'm like, this is kind of exactly yeah. like how the Florida series was, eh? Like, just a shootout. Yeah, I was pissed because Carolina was absolutely fucking them five on five. And then they took three penalties in the second period and Tampa scored on all three. And then it's like, well, that's fucked. They went from 4-2 to 5-4. They were, they were like, Tampa looked absolutely rattled after it went up 4-2 Carolina. And then uh, I think it was Jake Bean took a penalty to stop a two-on-one, scored right away. They took a nut. Svechnikov took a penalty, scored right away. And then yeah. it's like, well, shit, man. Like, yeah. they, let, they let Tampa back into that game. And it's tough. But I would say putting Peter Mrazek in after game two, like, Nadelkovic played great. Don't get me wrong. He let that one really bad one in, after, in at the end of game one, to which ended up being the game winner, which was a tough one for him. But um, yeah. I thought, like, it's kind of harsh to take him out from Mrazek. But for whatever reason, they've been, I think they've been playing better in front of Mrazek. And he's been making those, like, timely saves. You know what I mean? Not necessarily the best saves, but, like, when you need a save, he's been making them. Obviously, other than the fucking five goals or four goals he let in in the second period. But I don't even think you can really blame any of those on him. Oh, they kind of looked like they just kind of had one of those inexperienced, like the team just kind of let off like halfway through the game, right when they had like that death grip on them where they could put them to sleep. But Tampa being Tampa, of course they scored the game. Like I was just bringing my TV outside because it's, it's that perfect time of year where, we can watch the games outside and sit on the back deck, have a couple of drinks, and it's oh, beautiful baby. out. And I was like, yeah, I'll just wait for the end of the period because it was like three minutes or four or five minutes left in the game. And because uh, I was doing something else, I look at my phone, it's 5-4. They scored three goals in like the span of six minutes oh, to end that, that period. And I was like, well, sat down, got the TV set up for the third period, and immediately they scored – uh, or Kucherov scored that one just like behind his back and everything just kind of flung the puck five hole, just an absolutely stinky goal to, to put Carolina to sleep. So Tampa did a reverse Uno on that one for, for Carolina, but man, I think Carolina the reverse got Uno. <laughs> the reverse card. <laughs> I think they got a couple more games in them to win, but I, yeah, I'm starting to lean towards Tampa winning this thing. They just look Yeah, good. they look good, man. They look really good. It felt like Carolina needed to take advantage of scoring four against Vasilevsky that game. Yeah, how many more do you score on them next yeah. game or something? Yeah. So. Not going to be easy, that's for sure. I, uh, I like what I've been seeing so far from both teams. It just sucks that like Tampa is playing some absolutely unreal hockey. Like, I, I don't know. I... I love Tampa and I think that their team is so methodically built from top to bottom that it's hard to cheer for anybody else because they, they, they are essentially the favorites. And you know what? It's funny actually that this is the year after they won the cup. So they're still like on that Stanley Cup hangover kind of in a sense. But if they're hungover, dude, they, they're not like my kind of hungover because my kind of hungover is not like that. That's for sure. These guys are absolutely ripping. And uh, Kurt, me and you were watching the game yesterday. And holy fuck, man, like Carolina is a great team, but it's like every single time you give them even a little bit of space and they just they run with it. And it's on, all of a sudden in the back of the net. And it's like, okay, this is like... How do you, if you're Carolina, what do you do differently? You know what I mean? I guess you don't take penalties. That's one thing, but. I know it's, it's crazy because Tampa has that team where they have four, like just really good consistent lines where we were saying like in like previous episodes, if you go back 20, 30 episodes, I don't know how many it would be of saying exactly why Tampa won the cup. They're still running that same formula and it's still working like super well for them. Um, and honestly, if Tampa, Vegas, Tampa, Colorado, whoever's in the in the playoff finals or Stanley Cup finals, that is going to be one hell of a series. Oh, my God. Um, and I just love games like that. That's why I've loved this playoffs, like especially this series, round two. The electric games, man, it just seems like we're bringing in like more fans and everything. And, I mean, you can like to keep the league small, but I'd like to grow it and have hockey be more dominant around the yeah. U.S. too. 
And it seems like a lot of people that aren't normal hockey fans are coming in, jumping into these games that are just obviously makes you fall in love with the game of hockey and stuff. And they're just, this is what you wait for all year for these really emotional, good games. And I mean, Carolina, if they do something special, this is the playoffs. The Leafs just blew three, one lead. So maybe, uh, maybe the Hell colors yeah, are the issue. And then Tampa Bay is about to blow one here. But it is. We'll see. I like that theory. Yeah. Hot take. Hot take of the week. That was my TSN noise. <laughs> Kurt's um, yeah, dude. I think something else, like Kucherov's leading the playoffs in points right now, right? Um, and you got to, there's something to be said for having not played all season. Like, Obviously, you you worried about a little bit of rust, but Buddy came in fully rested, and I think it's showing now. Like he hit the ground running, and he's absolutely buzzing. That power play is unreal now that he's back. And uh, I also feel like Tampa Bay, Colorado should have been the Cup final last year. Yeah. So it would be kind of cool to see it this year, just to see, because I think those probably are probably are the two best teams on paper at least maybe not maybe not like i i still think carolina has a shot in this series um it's gonna be tough i think because the other thing i think tampa bay since the beginning of the playoffs last year they're nine and oh or ten and oh now after last night's game in games after a loss so they haven't lost two games in a row in the playoffs in two years wow um, that's actually an insane which stat. i mean it's pretty hard to lose a playoff series if you don't yeah, dude. It's like, how do you beat a team that never loses two in a row? It's like that's that's seven game. That's a seven game series they win. Yeah. Um. So it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough for anyone to beat them. And I mean, maybe I don't know. I don't know about them against Boston or the Islanders, but it really does feel like Colorado Tampa is the series that it's meant to be at the end. Um, and it'd be fun to see because I think Colorado should have been there last year. Obviously, they didn't have the goaltending. We've touched on that a bunch, but um, that would be a, a, a serious uh, clash of heavyweights there because both teams with high-powered offenses but have that kind of like physical physical side of the game that generally benefits you in the playoffs. So um, that would be a really fun one to see, but I still really want Tampa to lose this one. As you said last week, Colton, like they're kind of the – the villain in the playoffs this year and uh I, I i i just want carolina to to get at least conference finals i think if they'd come up against boston or the islanders they've got a really good shot and then cup final anything can happen but uh it's gonna be so hard to get past this tampa team 